How's it going, everybody? Welcome to We Do Tech and also to a, another tech news video. Now, of course, it hasn't been some time since Lost done a news video, but we are back, hopefully, for a really long time still. Again, <laughs> when we actually get time to Monday, Wednesdays, and a Fridays. Now then, starting off with our first uh, topic, AMD's uh, next generation AM5 uh, socket platform will only support a DDR5 uh, memory. Now, this hasn't been confirmed officially, but so far it does look like it because uh, numerous sources in the supply chain have confirmed uh, that the X670 and the B650 AM5 platforms only support DDR5 memory, which has implications of full platforms are based on AMD's uh, future Zen 4 processors. Now, additionally, we have established that AMD has switched to the chip-based design for their AM5 motherboard chipsets as well, which means that uh, some models will have uh, two chipset dies. Now, from 2017 to, to date, uh, AMD's uh, current socket AM4 has uh, housed uh, five generations of CPUs, which is, again, really awesome awesome although some features were uh, missing spanning the excavator to Zen 3 and supporting both Beast Experts 3 and 4 interfaces. However AMD's decision to use DDR5 memory exclusively implies that you may have to pay a bit more and if you can actually get DDR5 than uh, compared to Intel who does uh, still have a DDR4 versions of their Raptor like uh, motherboards as well. Now I still rather go for DDR4 than DDR5 speed isn't necessarily that needed for gaming, but uh, later on everything will probably move to DDR5 anyway. So we'll see how it goes. And then the next generation of 40 series GPUs from NVIDIA will not feature a PCI Express Gen 5 interface, according to a reliable NVIDIA hardware leaker. Now it is only rumors for now, but if accurate, the GeForce RTX 40 series will no longer be bottlenecked for next generation generation desktop PCs. Any quicker interface would simply not be supported by the 8102 GPUs. Now, currently, only Intel Elder Lake supports PCI Express Gen 5 anyway, although AMD is building its Ryzen 7000 series Raphael platform, which will most likely include Gen 5 support around the same time as Nvidia's ADA GPUs are released. Now, because it already contains the Intel ATX 3.0 or PCI Express Gen 5 specs, the 16-pin connector in does enable up to 600 watts of a power per cable. The Ada Lovelace architecture, which is slated to launch before the end of this year, was believed to include PCI Express Gen 5 interface compatibility, but that doesn't seem to be the case. Now, of course, all of this is rumors and just leaks, or nothing is confirmed just yet, so we'll see what's going to happen in the future. Just before you continue, on to the next uh, topic, just a quick word from today's uh, video sponsor. Are you looking for a new gaming gear, whether it's peripherals, hardware, cases, and so on? Well, MSI has what you need, especially with their reasonably priced PCI Express 3 or 4 NVMe SSDs like the M390 with a solid performance at an affordable price, which we also did a build on. For the case, the Gunnier 110M might just be the perfect fit for your new build. It still has the same a cool design as the 110R, but now with a mesh front that allows for increased airflow. Better yet, it's even more affordable. Now, if you're instead in need of a power supply, the MPG A850GF is ready for you with an 80 plus gold rating, a 10 year warranty, being fully modular and available in 650, 750, and 850 watts. Lastly, what about peripherals? Well, the GM41 wireless is the one you should check out. Not only is it wireless, but it's also a lightweight, only weighing 74 grams, uses the PAW3370 new high-end optical sensor, a battery life up to 70 hours, and it comes with a cool docking station, so you don't need to worry about cables or anything like that, just dock it on there. So check out all of those with the link in the description below. 
Now, another leak confirms the Intel Arc Alchemist desktop GPUs will feature seven SKUs in the lineup. The complete specifications of the new Arc A series are currently unknown, however, and will most likely remain so for the next few weeks as the debut date approaches. Now, what we do know is that Intel is planning a limited edition of the Arc Alchemist desktop card, which can hint that it will be a high end variant with the base performance available. Previous leaks have revealed that this card is named the ARC A780, like the NVIDIA ranges. However, we haven't seen any performance leaks for this card in a long time. A Geekbench leak obtained days ago revealed that the ARC A770 desktop model will have more than 12.7 gigs of VRAM, thus most likely the 80 card will have around 16 gigs available. Now it does appear that the A770 will have a complete A CM G10 GPU with 32 XE cores. So take that up for what you will. Of course, we'll have to wait to see actually how they compare. But Intel getting into the market, every time I hear about it, I'm getting excited. So, yeah. And then uh, next up, according to the Wall Street Journal, Twitter is re-evaluating Elon Musk's unsolicited offer to buy the company and uh, take it private. According to the journal, the two parties meet on a Sunday to discuss a Musk's uh, proposition, uh, indicating that the social media business may be open to Musk's offer. Musk did propose uh, paying a $52.20 for 20, just get that in there per share, valuing a Twitter at a four. $43 billion. Jump change for, for Elon. Musk has a public question on Twitter a future with a polling his 81 million of followers on potentially changes to the network, which is trailing most competitors. Twitter has expected to reject the offer and implemented a limited duration shareholders right plan, a strategy known as a poison pull defense that affirms used to reject a takeover efforts like the one Twitter is facing by a making more shares available for the board and some of the shareholders. Poisonables makes it difficult for a potential acquirer to acquire a majority of the company's shares. Now, I'm not sure how many of you guys actually care about this, but yeah, let me know down in the comments below. It's still pretty interesting. Something always happens with Elon Musk to make the world a bit more interesting. So we'll see where it goes. Now, according to a report from EAV Resources, GM would no longer provide a battery replacement for the all-electric versions of their Chevy Spark. The Chevrolet Spark EV debuted in 2013, and GM continued to produce additional models until 2016, with the oldest Spark EV model approaching 10 years, owners may find themselves without a working vehicle if their battery packs dies. Now, it is, of course, 10 years, which is a pretty decent range for a car, of everything but uh, for <laughs> Sparky. But yeah, the uh, battery pack in a GM's uh, Spark EVs and other electric vehicles has an eight year uh, warranty or a 100,000 mile uh, warranty, which means that the uh, warranty has already expired for the Spark EVs released in uh, 2013 and uh, 2014. Anyway, it's unclear whether GM will uphold its guarantee and replace the battery packs in a broken down Spark or if, as EV Resources points out, GM will offer to buy the vehicle back rather than replacing the batteries. That's not a bad offer. Now, Apple may have started reinforcing its policy against unused and dysfunctioning apps more strictly. Back in 2016, the company stated that it would go out of its way to remove applications that had stopped working and not followed its latest guidelines or had become outdated. After gaining a little attention in recent years, the policy has resurfaced in the public consciousness this week. A handful of indie developers shared an email from Apple prompting them to update their games in a series of tweets. Apple noted that developers can continue earning revenue from microtransactions even if their app or a game is removed from the App Store. Furthermore, either their programs will continue to function for those who have downloaded them on their devices already. So no need to worry about that. Actually not a bad decision to keep everything up to date so 
not really any problems are there. Now, more Apple news. Apple's WWDC event is scheduled for June 6th, and it's likely that the company will announce a new Mac. Apple is expected to unveil its powerful Mac Pro with a custom silicon as well as the M2 MacBook Air. According to new reports, Apple is already working on a new iMac variant with an M3 chip, which could be released next year. Now, at this point, we don't have any concrete information about these new chips because we have her previously that is going to be the M2 chips and there was the M01 Ultra that was released in the Studio Mini but uh, I'm excited nonetheless. Now it is it's interesting that Apple is already begun to work on its M3 chip whereas the M2 chip has yet seen the light of a day. The M3 chip will be the company's entry level processor and it could appear in the iMac next year. Now these again are just rumors that should be taken with a grain of salt with a big grain of salt because the company hasn't officially stated anything yet. Testing and development of a SpaceX is a Starship rocket appear to have hit a little snag. Starship is a SpaceX's new rocket which may serve as the company's backbone in its effort to launch the first human mission to Mars and rapidly expand its Starlink small satellite internet constellations. An image being circulated on various social media platforms appears to indicate that the critical component of the Starship ships as a rocket booster was recently damaged. This component is in charge of transferring a propellant to the vehicle's engines and the impact of the damage on SpaceX is planned to conduct an orbital test of flight for the rocket as soon as possible is still unknown. The damaged component is in charge of transporting fuel from the rocket's tanks to the engine as well as passing through the booster's liquid oxygen tanks. But these things are to be expected with such extremely delicate machine. <laughs> There's been a lot of failures in the past, but Elon and SpaceX have been, uh, pushed through it. So most likely we'll see something man, probably in the next year or so. But anyway, that's pretty much it for our latest tech news. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, please like, share, subscribe, and comment. Like always, all the topics will be linked in the video description down below. So check that out. But anyway, thanks for watching guys. And we'll check all of you next time in another tech news video or a normal video. Cheers guys.